Uh, good afternoon. Today we are going to talk to Prof. Godfrey Mugwala from the Department of Geography. Welcome, Prof. Uh, thank you. Uh, Prof, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Well, I started way back in 1998 when I joined what was called the Enduro University of Education. Uh, it was a university college of University of Zimbabwe. And um, after joining, one of the requirements was that from time to time one is expected to publish. And in order to publish, you had to do research. And the way I studied was that um, I studied with literature review papers, because at that time I didn't have resources to carry out empirical studies outside in the institution. So that is how I started. But later, I managed to publish a couple of papers. At that time, I held only a master's degree. And um, much later, I pursued doctoral studies at the University of Pitfatasran in South Africa, uh, where I spent three years. And uh, obviously with a PhD, for a PhD you have got to, to carry out research. So in a nutshell, that is how I started. I started with disappointment, I must say. Initially, after sub, uh, submitting a paper to the journal, it was rejected. I revised it. Again, it was rejected in the third time. It was finally thrown out. So I started with a disappointment, but I didn't stop there. I tried again, and I eventually succeeded publishing my first paper. So I must say I started with disappointment. That is where I started from. Yeah, Prof, thank you very much. Even though you started with disappointment, but what we have learned is that perseverance pays the price. And then, okay, Prof, taking forward, what are you currently working on? What I'm currently working on is climate change and how it affects uh, rural livelihoods in particular, especially in mountain environment. So my research area basically is around here in the Dragon Big Mountain, Manuti Dragon Big Mountain region. And I'm trying to figure out, for example, how the climate itself is changing through time. But uh, beyond that also, I'd like to understand the nature of that change and how it is affecting rural livelihoods, the people who live around here and um, how they survive, the means of surviving, and how it is connected to climate change. And you understand the, the nexus between the climate itself, then how people survive, as well as the environmental resources. So my research is too broad. On one hand, I want to try to understand climate change itself, and how it is affecting environmental resources. And on the other hand, how it affects uh, rural life. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, Prof, what role can artificial intelligence play in the field of geography? It is very important, especially within the context of my research. Uh, we depend a lot on artificial intelligence, particularly in the form of geographic information systems and remote sensing. Uh, it is important because mountains by nature are not uh, very accessible and therefore we have to depend on technology that can capture information or data and then, then make that data available. Uh, to the researcher. Uh, in some instances, that data is going to be 
produce through modeling. And for that reason, artificial intelligence is important. But the caveat, we also ought to be careful about the extent which we depend on artificial intelligence. We don't want to end up in a world where everything is run by robots. Uh, there must be some, some limit. So we have to be careful as to the extent to which we depend on artificial intelligence. Uh, just to give you an example, the artificial intelligence can actually be so attractive that you start, it starts to determine your own research agenda. Uh, and you miss out the most important things that you ought to know about in, in the world wide world. Um, I would say so, for example, that uh, young people today, they get attracted so much to the output, the colorful uh, maps that are generated, and so on and so forth. But then, then that question about uh, who is it for, who is benefiting from the research, so that is why I say we have to be careful. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? There are, especially the thing that I'm working on currently, in uh, respect of climate change. Uh, how the climate itself is changing. There is a um, notion um, referred to as in uh, elevation dependent booming. And it has been widely researched in other parts of the world, in the Himalayas and in the Rockies and Andes in South America. But uh, here it seems not to be present, or at least it has not been sufficiently proved that it exists. And we want to know why that is the case. So that is one of the gaps. The other gap relates to the application of the research itself. Research has got to benefit people. It has got to benefit society. And there is need to look into how the research can be applied so that uh, people benefit from it. Within my colleagues, it is about uh, how that research can benefit a rural livelihood. That is things that are related to food security, water security, and protection and management of natural resources in our environment. Thank you so much, bro. And then what message can you give to aspiring researchers? Uh, like I said at the beginning, I came from humble beginnings, and perseverance is um, the catchword here. You will learn from your disappointments, you will also learn from your mistakes. In Africa, we always say, if you want to climb to the summit of the mountain, you don't go straight up. You look for a um, course that will allow you uh, to go without facing too much difficulty. In other words, it is a, a route that is not straight, but it is a route where at times uh, you are going to go in a zigzag way until you get to the summit. Uh, that is how it works with the research as well. We are going to be patient. We are going to learn along the way. And it is a convoluted way, like I was saying, rather than a straight way all the way up. Um, be that as it may, that does not mean that uh, 
where resources to meet, and where time is available, and where you have good capacity, you have good weight until until uh, late in your life. Uh, but to young researchers, I would say that be prepared, be prepared to face disappointment as well. Uh, you will find even some of your basic research being thrown out when you try to publish it. But don't give up. Uh, try again. And at times you actually find that what would have been rejected by a particular journal is uh, accepted by even a higher impact factor journal. That is how things work. So it's all about perseverance and uh, accepting that uh, uh, there are so many other things that can affect uh, your world. Uh, look for an opportunity to get guidance from those who have made it to the top. And by saying this, I mean one ought to collaborate with other researchers in order to be successful. And so this is what I would say. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, they say also, this is an African saying, they say, if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, you go with others. So that is how it works. Collaboration is important. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? Uh, there are many, but I can mention three. Okay. Um, the, the first one is I'm a tennis player. Well, uh, I'm old now, but I am still active on the tennis court. I like playing tennis. That is one of my interests. And the second one is chess. I like chess a lot. And probably when I retire, I will have more time to commit myself to the chess board. And the third one is that I, I read. I, I like reading fiction. And in a month or so, the time is already about three novels. Yeah, I, I enjoy reading. Those, those are my passions. Thank you so much, Prof, uh, for sharing with us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks.